What's up, everyone? We are currently live on the streets. We are polling people about their thoughts on humanity. We're going to see what they think. This is quite the interesting uh, eclectic array of techies as well as people that are houseless. It's quite interesting. So we'll see who wants to um, come on the set and chat. Hey, brother. You want to come chat on the set? All right. No worries. All right. We just got a simple no. You want to chat on the set, brother? Nah. All, right. all good. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Why don't you while. tell you our like viewers a little bit about that alley back there? Oh, you can't hear me. Away. Okay. Here. I all see right. some people coming. Let's see. Maybe I can stop this car and get this driver to talk to me. Hold on. Hold on. Hey. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Get away from me. Yeah. yeah. Yo, brother, want to come onto the set and talk for a little bit? Nice. That was a fast turn. Nice. Great. What's, what's your name, brother? Malachi the Great. Malachi the Great. Interesting. Come, will you come to center shot for me like a little more this yeah, way? Thank good. you. We're doing a show on the thoughts on humanity. We would love to hear uh, what you think. Uh, prolifically stupid. And... Unpack that a little more for us. Why? Um, we like to do things that, um, you know, you know, the, the, the real definition of, of pain is, uh, you know, knowing what uh, is hurting you, but you do it anyways. And you just keep on doing it. It's entertaining, really, you know. I, I, I find the ignorance and the stupidity entertaining, but that's just me. Um, what are we doing that we know is causing us pain, but that we keep doing? Well, that's a really long list. You know? Give me the, the top worst things that we're doing. Uh, war, obviously. Um, you know, um, anyway, any freedoms we, we might have. Can, can you, let, let's stay on war for just a second quick. How does that make you feel? Well, I don't really feel anything. I'm an American. We don't have war here. No, no one's dropping bombs on us. No one's invading our, our land. We don't, uh, the Americans don't understand what war is. Right? Yeah. Because it's on foreign soil all the time. Well, just because it's, it's never really come here. The, uh, the only uh, Americans that ever, uh, you know, had uh, any experience of war were on the Aleutian Islands during World War II. It's the only time we ever lost land to a foreign power. Japanese. So... So the United States since 1776 has just been gaining land and never losing land. Right. Do you mind if I smoke? It's please, a rhetorical question. Please. Smoke, please. And you're welcome to swear. You're welcome to do whatever you want. Oh, trust oh, me. Great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you're sure. welcome to do whatever you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you say that this, uh, this pain that we have, the pain is that we know what we're doing wrong, but we're not making any changes about it. Correct. Yeah. And one of the main things is war. And so what would... As, as a, yeah. a humanity at large, you know, I mean, maybe, I don't know if you're referring to the, the question as more of like a society in general, like us. Thank you. You're Jeez, welcome. I appreciate that. You're yeah. 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 Society at large. Yeah. What, what, like thoughts on society. This has been good so far. You've been, you know, you've hammered out one of the big ones. Mm -hmm. Can I give you the, the argument that people give is that if the United States was to sit back and not have a massive military budget, mm. that the United States would lose because other people would come and conquer. Lose what? The United States would have wars on its soil. Oh, yeah, that's a bunch of bullshit. You think that if the United States had a like a $10 billion military budget instead of 600 billion you think that we would be able to protect ourselves on this land you think people wouldn't come invade us well uh, yeah i mean what's really defending us um you know i, I happen to to enjoy studying this type of thing uh, what's protecting us are, are the atlantic the pacific and uh mexico and canada yeah yeah that's yeah, that's know. huge yeah, yeah exactly those yeah. are some pretty big walls right there you know yeah. um yeah it's if a good insight if we didn't have those if we were like right next to uh you know uh, 17 other l landlocked countries yeah exactly we'd, we'd be at war and um we'd actually spend even more on our military budget than we do currently you know you know trust me the government um uh 
you know, people believe in like conspiracy theories, like the government has all their shit together and stuff. They don't. They're they're idiots, just like we are. You know, um, they don't know what they're doing. You know, so they throw a bunch of money at, at at war, and really, it's just unnecessary. They don't know what they're doing. You know, I wish the I wish the Illuminati existed, and I wish fucking Freemasons were running shit. And I, you know, if, if somewhere there was like some grand council council of thirteen people like running the world, things would be going pretty well. But there's obviously not. You know. Um, well, and so wait, wait. So now, what is to say that the thirteen people running the world, the council running the world, the new world order? How do we guarantee that these are benevolent souls? Well, if you read the the charter for um, the Illuminati and uh, what the new world order is, it's actually uh, quite a positive thing. It's it's not really this doomsday type thing. I mean, they they want a, a worldwide currency. Uh, they they want uh, you know war to stop because it increases trade, you know. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's only good things. And, and you know, if you really want war to stop, what you do is you you increase trade. That's how it's always been done, you know. Uh, war it, decreases as trade increases. Yes. Um, you know, when you go to history class, they often focus on wars and battles and dates of battles and stuff. But really, if you flip it around and, and focus on when trade treaties were signed and, and new trade uh, routes were developed. Um, that's that's really the turning points for civilizations because uh, you know. so then this one belt uh, that's happening right now in China one belt one road mm -hmm. have you heard of that no uh, China's uh, making a massive connection across Asia to Europe and Africa and Java so that it can more easily trade resources Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I like yeah. it. You know, kind of like the Silk so, Road. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so then, so then the the general principle then is that then there will be less war. Is that true? Well, yeah, because uh, war is fought over uh, resources. You know, um, it's not fought over money. You know, it's fought over resources. Resources, you know, turn into money. Um, but yeah. I mean, once we once we freely trade resources, you know, it's okay. It's like when uh, you know there's a bunch of five year olds sitting at a table, and instead of the the big kid hogging all the toys, they all start they all learn how to share. Suddenly, they stop fighting. You know, I mean, you don't look into your neighbor's bowl, you know, uh, food to see if he has more than you. You look in to see if he has enough. You know, that way everybody's you know copacetic. Um, I recommend you watch um, a great YouTube channel. Uh, uh, I can't remember, uh, John Green, I believe, he, he wrote um, the, the Fault in Our Stars. Uh, he also does a, a, a history show uh, going through the entire world's history. And he's a, a big believer in, in, in what I'm talking about. And I'm really, I'm just regurgitating what, what he said, you know. Can, can, I, can I just uh, unpack this a little bit more? The, uh, the idea that if I look at something and I'm able to share it with fellow people, then that is um, transcending our animalistic instincts. Yeah, exactly, and, and it's also uh, encouraging the free, free flow of uh, uh, science, you know, and, and uh, you know, the exchange of ideas. Trade also reduces racism, um, you know, it, it really a lot of positive things. If you look at almost every city that uh, is near a coastline and has a lot of trade near a port, they're often much less racist. Um, you know, than, than most other cities, you know, as like you know, Texas, for example, you know, or someplace like that. Okay. Thanks, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really sarcastic, dry sense of humor. Well, it's 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 good stuff. So, um, all right, come at us again with this. So, if you are uh, near water, it decreases war because you're not ne landlocked next to another nation but it also increases your ability to trade because you're on water yeah i mean i don't want to say just that that one instance will decrease war because it's really up to a nation state as a whole right you know but um uh that that, that city is almost certainly going to be more liberal um and, and not want to be involved in a war uh, you know but i mean don't take my word for it you know you can you can research it do you think there's something about the way that countries like Switzerland behave that is intriguing? Um, no. Uh, uh, to me, it, it, what's intriguing is, is how we behave. How the United States behave? Yeah, and, and other countries. I mean, to me, that, that, that's out of the norm. That's weird. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but the peace, though. Yeah, and, and they have a lot of money. 
Yeah. You know, and they got a lot of money through trade. You know, so once again, you know, they they'd rather trade than than, than fight a war. You know. Um, what are these other sort of pain points? War was the biggest pain point that you first started with. Yeah. It's What's the, the next? One. Yeah, it's the easiest one. Is there something else about war before you go on to the next one? Um, if we all refused to fight, there wouldn't be wars. You know, and I guarantee you, uh, you know, uh, Trump isn't going to go fight. George Bush isn't going to go fight. They ain't going to send their kids to go fight. Um, you know, uh, they don't have enough jails to hold all of us. You know, it. It, it is simple as uh, ending war on a worldwide scale is as simply as as simple as just saying no. I'm not going to fight. You know, and, and to me that's kind of the easy way out. And then if you say that you're not going to fight, what's stopping somebody else from saying that? Well, I want your land and your resources. Well, I mean that's that's what we have. The I mean you're confusing our uh, military force. You know uh, that that fights foreign powers with with domestic. You know, the police are there to make sure no one takes our land. But uh, let's not forget that the police are the biggest gang in the United States. They, they are the gang that charges protection money. Uh, and if you don't pay their protection money, they will take your land. You know, I mean, so it's kind of, you're fucked if either way. You, 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 okay, but there's still this, there is still this point that they're, both sides have to agree to not steal from each other. Oh, I say we should say between nations. Um, yeah, because it, it's, it's more profitable to, for, to have peace. Every time, you know, I mean, that, that, that's always more profitable. And, and you know, realistically speaking, uh, there's enough food and, and resources for everybody. There really is, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, if everyone shared a little bit, everyone would have enough, you know. Like, I mean, look at the background here. You got all these dope fiends fucking hogging all their fucking uh, dope. If they all shared, there'd be plenty. No one would be dope sick, you know. Many of the viewers might not get that, but this is San Francisco. Oh, oh there's also a, th you know, like a four thousand dollar a month one bedroom condo right next to us at the same time. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. gentrification is pretty extreme here. Well, that there, there's also not there. They don't have any interest in sharing either. That's the, that's kind of the, that's and so, so how would the world ideally look then? Before here, come a little more towards me in the shot. So like, what would the, what would the world look like then in an ideal scenario where we are uh, sharing? Well. First of all, every man in the world would be gay except for me, um, and I'd get all the women. Uh, but it would be like a socialist type of environment, you know, where we'd you know, be, be sharing, and, and the government would uh, uh, take care of the uh, necessities, um, and then corporations and businesses would, would take care of luxuries. You know, that way, you know, you can always get what you need, you know, but if you want something else, you might have to work for it, you know. Do you have a... That seems like uh, one of the fundamental principles of maximizing human potential is giving people at least the basic food, water, shelter, internet. education, no, internet, internet, electricity, yeah. exact, yeah. exactly. We've declared internet a necessity now. Absolutely. Thank you, Obama. Yeah. Well, we, get the, we need it for information technology. All right, porn. so porn. How about uh, next thing on the list after war? What is this other thing that's causing us lots of pain that we just keep doing and ignore? Uh, lack of uh, perspective, you know. Come, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to this side for my left arm now. Are you getting tired? The yeah, microphone's heavy. Go, go this way now. You're ordering me around a lot. A little, I feel I feel I feel right, like. Now we're good. Okay. Are you good? Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Uh, okay, Thank I'm just making sure you're good because I'm. Yeah, because okay. now I get to use my left arm. Yeah. Left arm. Yeah. Am, I, am I am I am I doing good pose? Is this okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just want now my okay. left arm feels better. Okay. Good. Okay. So, was it falling asleep? Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, what was the next pain point? Um, uh, like a lack of perspective, um, you know, I think perspective is a very underrated, uh, a thing, um, you know, it, perspective is not only knowledge, uh, but it is also understanding, it is empathy, uh, it is, you know, looking at a problem and knowing, you know, a hundred different ways of solving it instead of one, you know, um, and, and it's also understanding, uh, the next person, uh, you know, and, and what it's like to be in their shoes, um, you know, which... It's hard to hate someone if you understand uh, why they're acting the way they act. Uh, the why is extremely important. And if you understand why, um, you're much less likely to hate them. You know, people kill spiders because they don't understand them. If they had the perspective of understanding the spider, uh, they, they'd probably be okay with it. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So you bring up a couple points there. Um, perspective. So it's almost as though if our perspective gets augmented, to new dimensions of thinking, to dimensions of maybe thinking that 
rather than seeing one way to solve a problem, we see a hundred ways that instead of seeing a binary stance on a political or economic issue, we see a multivariate stance. Yeah. Has lots of variables. Yeah, it's pretty sad, especially with our, our government, you know, one we got liberals and, and conservatives and everyone's fighting for one side or the other and, and I, I swear to God it's amazing that people don't simply think to themselves, well maybe the answer lies somewhere in the middle. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't know. Because, yeah, extremes typically don't work. You know, extremes are, are war, you know, or, yeah, it's it, it's sad, you know. Don't be a conservative. Don't be a liberal. You be know. a free thinker. Yeah, exactly. Be be you, you know, and, and just and don't be a dick. That's rule number one in life. Don't be a dick. Amen to that. Yeah, I, I know. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Is there um, another thought on humanity that comes to mind that you'd like to share on the way out? Uh, so I, I recently moved to San Francisco uh, about a year, year and a half ago. Welcome. Thank you. Um, and I've never experienced uh, uh, the, the drug use uh, like we have here. Um, you know, I didn't realize that drugs were as much of a problem as they are. You know, I grew up in Napa Valley in a really small town, you know, pretty privileged and rich and all that. Uh, you know, we didn't really have homeless people. We didn't have drug addicts, you know, hanging on the street. Um, you know, drug addiction uh, breeds crime, unfortunately, um, because they, they need to get their fix. Uh, and it's not like they can go, you know, get it for free somewhere. Um, yeah. You know, like it is in Denmark, for example. Um, you know, I think that drug addiction is... Can we pause there for a second just because yeah. is that actually a, a good solution to the problem is to have it free somewhere and then have maybe rehabilitation to get away from I don't I don't like that phrase a good solution oh. um, you know uh, a, it's a better solution than to have them go and steal and be violent yeah for I mean let's just go for better right now we don't know, need to go for good or perfect okay you yeah, know? And you think hi pretty girl Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. It's true. What is he talking about? Yeah, he's just saying that um that there is a um upsides to drugs. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh society has always had drugs, human civilization for as long as we've been around. Uh I hate to think I mean, where would we be if we didn't have drugs, you know? Who knows? Um I am a drug user. So, you know, I obviously think there are many benefits to it. Um you know, I'm not saying that, that drugs are bad, but drug addiction and, and uh, you know, what will we have that's, going on over that's there? What that's, 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 that's what I feel. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, I'm not. Drugs are fine. Yeah. Drugs expand awareness. Yeah. Drug addiction sucks. Yeah, it really does suck. And, uh, you know, I will tell you as uh, being a heroin addict myself, um, it, it's, not, it's not really a, a, a fun thing at all. I don't think there's any heroin addict that likes being a heroin addict. You know, it just kind of... It's a pitfall you fall into and you can't climb out of it. You know, it's, it's a bummer. It really is. But um, yeah. What does that What does that feel like though? To you said it's a pitfall that you enter in and you can't get out of. What What's What is it? Why, why does it feel that way? Well, because you're. It, it, a, a pitfall is. Uh, let me explain. A pitfall is a type of trap that humans build to catch animals. We put leaves and uh, sticks on top of it so the animal does not see it. It uh, It looks like normal ground. You're just walking and then all of a sudden you fell into it and uh, you weren't ready for it, you weren't prepared for it, there was no way to avoid it and suddenly you're in there but you can't get out. Um, that's kind of like drug addiction, you know, it, uh, you know, you don't think you're addicted until suddenly you are, you know. Um, I, I myself, um, you know, was a, a private contractor uh, that's a non-military personnel in Afghanistan and I got shot while I was over there. Uh, doctors gave me Oxycontin and I'd never really done opiates before and all of a sudden you know before I knew what was going on I was addicted I, I called my doctor one day and said hey I've got a the worst flu I've ever had in my life and I don't have a temperature it's really weird and he said oh you're withdrawing you know that, that's you know from cut, us cutting you off the opiates and I said wow like I'm really sick man like this is this is shitty um, it's some of the worst pain I've ever felt in my life uh, so yeah I went out and got more opiates you know um, and a lot of people will sit there and say to themselves, well, you just need to man up and you need to just go through it. Um, I'll tell you. Uh, well, there's better ways to relieve pain that we have yet to figure out. A absolutely. We have some people that work in biotech that are figuring out how to target the specific 
nerves that are causing the pain and yeah yeah but the point Instead is of numbing the whole body yeah but the point is the addiction is, once you once you you know once you're in that situation you know it's it's just it's it's hard to get out of it and it's it's a it's a lack of perspective to say well you just simply need to stop doing opiates because especially here being homeless on the street uh, it's impossible to uh, go through withdrawal while you're homeless in the street. You are so sick, you can't go to the grocery store. You can't, you can't get yourself food. You can't get yourself water. You can't walk. You know, you need to use the bathroom every five minutes. Uh, withdrawing while you're homeless is not an option. Uh, so, you know, they, they, they have to go out and, uh, you know, as they say here in the city, hit licks um, and commit crimes to uh, get money. And what does hit licks mean? Commit crimes. Yeah, you know. I, I'm, hit, I'm, 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 I'm ignorant, man. Okay, okay. I don't know. Yeah, hitting licks is, uh, is uh, going out to uh, commit a crime specifically that makes money. You know, it's not for the fun of it. It's not, uh, you know, for revenge or anything like that. It is uh, solely to make money. And I just hadn't heard that term, hit licks. Yeah, yeah, you hit a lick. I don't, I don't know why they call it that. You know, like I said, I'm new. I'm new to the street too. It's been a year, and I'm, yeah. You know, I am, I am from the meadow. I'm not from the ghetto. You know, but I'm learning quite quite quickly. What what happened to go from meadow to ghetto? I, I explained previously. I went to Afghanistan and got shot, and the doctors gave me oxycontin, and I became addicted it to it. It was the like that, just like that. This that seems like you 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 make it. You summarize it in a sentence, and you make it seem as though that that is that really just the one that one sentence is can boom just yeah. do that to someone? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I went from, you know, I was 28 years old and I, I made, you know, $60,000 a year. I had my own house. I had a brand new car, totally paid off. I had a girlfriend I had been going out with for seven years. I wanted to marry. I had, a, you know, two cats. I had, you know, I had, I had fucking everything. And, uh, you know, I, I lost it all within two years and was homeless. You know, it, it does happen that quick. Um, and and it's, it's impossible to stop on your own. You cannot stop by yourself. It's, it, you cannot. You know, they, I don't care how strong your willpower is. If I took all the dopamine out of your brain, you, you'd lay on the ground and just writhe in pain. You know, we, we evolved to have dopamine in our brains because life uh, existence is painful uh, within itself. You know, that's why we have dopamine. You know, you are currently high right now, even without drugs. You know, you have dopamine going through your body. Yeah. We have that to numb the pain of being alive. You know, if you didn't have it, the wind hitting you right now would hurt. You know, it would, it, everything would just hurt. And that's how it is when you're withdrawing. Everything, everything fucking hurts really bad. Because we're just ticking closer and closer to, to, to death. Yeah. On our way out, and yeah, yeah. and we evolved to you know, uh, make it less painful. You know, so we could we function. To make it less painful to function. Yeah. So now, you know, I guess because this is so new, and I don't think, you know, if if messages like this can get out to more people for people to actually empathize and yes. care and gain more perspective yes. gain more perspective yes. like yes. you were saying earlier you know, i think that could be tremendously helpful at to to work together like we were initially talking about right. what now now uh so it seems as though there was a moment kind of like the logical person in me is trying to like maybe pinpoint mm -hmm. the you know you had a home girlfriend and things that you really enjoyed about life. And then there was a period of time where you went to, hello. There was we, God bless San Francisco for having so many beautiful women here. They won't really talk to me, but they're there. Just saying. <laughs> side note. It's true. It's true. Note, yeah. it's true. Yeah. Um, well, okay. And then, then there's a call to, to war for you. Mm -hmm. You decide to. Well, I was a private contractor. I was not in the military. You know, I decided to go because I wanted money. I wanted that hundred fifty thousand dollar check tax free. You know, that's that's what I went for. And then we're shot in Iraq, back. In, uh, Afghanistan, in Afghanistan. Yeah, shot in Afghanistan in the back. Yeah, a bullet ricocheted off a wall and hit me in the back. Right, right below my shoulder blade, right there. Below your shoulder blade. Yeah. And and then you did you lose some like some ability uh well i mean you know it it and then temporarily in the sense that having a hole in your back is kind of you know it hurts and you can't really do stuff quite as well as you used to 
So I, I, as I recovered for six months, you know, doing nothing and taking those Oxycontins, those opiates every day, you know, and, you know, being prescribed them by the doctor, just doing what I was supposed to do, you know, I didn't realize I was slipping into addiction. You know, you don't realize it because you've got all the dope you need. A, any opiate addict can be a functioning opiate addict if they have an unlimited supply, you know. Yeah. You know, I could go to, I could still make $60,000 a year and be successful if you just gave me a lifetime supply of heroin, you know, it'd be, I'd be fine. You know. But yeah, it's, it's when they cut you off, that's when you realize. So like I said, it's a pitfall, it sneaks up on you. You don't, you don't realize it's, it's happened until it's, it's already over and done with. And then all of a sudden you're there. And then it's a, it's a, so there's pain and then the pain is, uh, it's um, dulled by uh, painkillers. And right. then the painkillers before you know it become addictive. Yeah. And you don't even realize it, but you're depending and depending and depending. And then eventually, even though the pain's not there, you're still taking painkillers. Well, yeah, because it, it, uh, it doesn't take away the pain uh, forever. It just, it makes it a... Uh... What's up, man? What's up? We're, uh, the CIA is here and they're watching crackheads and tweakers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know how paranoid they are about the CIA and all that shit. Tweakers. You know. um, I, what were you saying? I don't know. It's, it's like this, this, this uh, we don't even realize it. Six weeks later or six months later, we don't even have pain anymore, but we're still addicted yeah. to painkillers. The, the pain just comes back ten times worse. You know, uh, the pain... Uh, oh, it comes back ten times worse? Yeah, I mean... It, when you stop taking it? Yeah, I mean, any pain that you were delaying uh, is, is worse. I mean, it's... Like, and that's because we've trained our body to become numb to... Yeah, yeah. Oops, wow. It's like lying to your girlfriend, you know. I mean, it's going to it's gonna delay pain now, but it's going to come back even worse later. Don't lie to your girlfriend, guys. Just, just, just fess up. It's all good, you know. Right off like a band-aid, you know. Because if you lie to her, like she's, yeah. yeah, she's gonna, she's gonna come back at you, and it's gonna be even worse. Yeah. Just get it over with. Yeah. You know, same thing with opiates. It, it's just gonna come back. Um, so then, so then, this, this, uh, this, this period of time when, when it, you kind of came to this realization that fuck, I am addicted. Addicted. Mm -hmm. Um, then when you came back, you decided to not go to your home. You wanted to, because you wanted the... No, I tried to go to rehab. I talked to my family for help. I did the whole fucking thing. I, I did everything I could possibly think of to try to, you know, just, and I had every resource available, you know, you know, my family was there hundred percent, my friends and family, you know, everybody, had, you know, rehab, but, um, you know, it's just, uh, uh, it, once you get past the withdrawal, the pain part, right, you are, um, depressed, um, for a year or two afterwards and you cannot it's impossible to enjoy anything you know my girlfriend would be like what do you want for dinner i, said, I don't care uh do you want to watch a movie i don't care uh do you want to have sex i don't care you know like you literally just don't give a shit you know you're just depressed and you don't nothing makes you happy you don't there's no genuine smile for a year or two and that's a long time to 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 you know not give a fuck about anything and to be depressed you know eventually you know it's it's like working 24 7 and never getting time off you know eventually you need a vacation and so you're like, well, I'm just going to, you know, go get high once, you know, because I need the sanity of feeling okay, um, you know. And I quit for, you know, three, four months and, you know, and then you do it once and that's it. One is never enough and a thousand is too many. So, so then it, it, uh... Don't block me. It, it, I just got to get a little stretch in. Um, okay, so then the God, I'm sexy. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, yeah. Around, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You just, uh, you know, this is it's, it's insightful, you know, and it's uh, here. Let's switch again. I'll be downwind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not a smoker, I take it. Yeah. Um. Damn. Um. Wait. Come a little closer now. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. What's up? Um, man, like you just, you know, literally, you know, literally speechless, you know? Well, I mean, it's, uh, you know, uh, just my story is a little different from, you know, other people's, but it's all generally the same, you know? And, and in the end, it's all my fault. You know, I, you know, there, there really is no excuse, you know? I mean, I've had many opportunities to stop and I just, I just can't, you know? Um, yeah. And it sucks being homeless, you know. Um, 
you be, uh, yeah, you get used to it though. I happen to be quite good at it, you know. Um, you know, because you, you know, you see some of the the kids over there. I mean, they they look like shit. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Are, are you, you're, you've you've uh, maybe figured out how to, like, you got a fucking watch on. You know. Yeah, I'm I'm wearing expensive clothes and they're clean and you know and and all that. What are you, what are you doing? How are you doing this and doing? This? If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Yeah. You know, I mean, ergo, I'm I'm doing things that I really shouldn't be doing. You know, um, but. I, the difference is, is that you know I, I happen to be a, a really intelligent person. I'm not saying these these other people are not smart. Everyone is smart in their own way, absolutely. Um, you know, but my type of intelligence it, it just happens to, to fit really well with with being homeless. You know, I know how to, to speak to people. You know, I'm a good I'm good at selling anything. You know, selling yourself or whatever, or selling the persona of being something else. If you go into a store to steal something, you are selling the fact that you're not homeless. You know, and that you're there for legitimate reason. Yeah. And when I walk yeah. into a store, I look like a regular person, yeah. you know, so they don't suspect me. You know, they suspect the homeless guy walking in to buy some ice cream and watch him the whole time as he makes a legitimate purpose. And then I rob them blind, you know, that type of thing, um, you know, and just, uh, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm willing to work. You know, I went to college and, you know, I, I got through that and, you know, it, it requires effort, just like being homeless. You just got to put the effort into it. You know, I don't know. Ron, do you have any thoughts while you're out here? No, yes, Ron. Very good. What's his name? Just make sure you get him uh, to agree. Yeah. My name is so and so, and I agree to. Uh, yeah. It's um. So yeah, my, my email too. Yeah. We would like to stay in touch as well. If you're my wrong. my real name is is Sean uh, Gagnon. Uh, just say that. Thank you so much for uh, yeah. sharing your thoughts. A very insightful. You're a very smart man, and uh, we appreciate you coming in and uh, sharing. Thank you. I'm uh, sure your you're time. Well, smart also. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we you really did. appreciate it, Sean. Thank you. It's all good, man. Um, yeah, I guess if you just want to say that, you know, that, you know, any any last thoughts about, about what we talked about? Drugs are bad, okay? Okay. 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 <laughs> What's your name again? Thanks, Sean. What's Alan, do you want to you wanna link up on email or anything? Yeah, yeah I'll give you my email. Yeah, me. cool. What is it? Uh, it's uh, Sean Canyon at 707. I'll, I'll write it down for you. Nothing but time on my hands, as you know, homelessness uh, tends to do. So you know, you know, something that we care a lot about is highlighting people's lives, and a lot of people that we highlight are building some sort of future in technology or in science or in in or in business. It's 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 over there. It's it's in it's in it's up probably upstairs on the. Yeah, I, I know, I know, but we're done with the conversation. So, but, yeah, I know that's fine. We'll find another person right now. Um, yeah, you should yeah. get a real dope fiend over here. Someone that'll pick your pocket while you're talking to him. That's pretty intense. Oh yeah, no, seriously, they they will. That's you know. pretty intense. I've got a few morals and values left, you know. I try. I do. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's, it's what what goes on here is is just is sad. You know, I mean, li li look at this. This is fucking sad. You know, this is to me, it's like dirty and grimy, and fucking it's the most depressing thing in the world. I walk down this alley to look for two friends. I uh, wish. Uh, I, I wouldn't be hanging out here, you know. I wish we had the um, RoboCam to get a shot of this. It would be less conspicuous as well. Just cycle back to one thing that you, like every, the whole story that you told right. and then where it leads us to back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. For me, it makes it feel like the partly war has caused people physical ailments yes. and then that has caused some addiction to drugs yes. and a lot, I will say a lot of military personnel uh, struggle with this problem more so than the average person you know I mean because they give out opiates like candy there uh, and uh, as much as I disagree with war and, and everything that we did in Afghanistan it wasn't the right thing to do you know um, we, we still need to support uh, people that, that were damaged by it and we really should be helping them you know, because uh, they don't deserve to, to lose everything through drug addiction. You know, even if you don't lose your house and all that, you still lose yourself. You know, 
it sucks when, when you can't uh, have sex with your girlfriend or I'd like to bring up the um, the uh, enjoy the the uh, the Afghanistan uh, opium poppy trade right now in my pocket right now I would have told you to go fuck off I need to go make some money so I can get more dope you know because that's what's important because I will not be I won't, I'm not gonna be sick fuck all that Wow um, I can't believe that what it's just it's blowing my mind the connection back to the beginning about how the the taking care of veterans taking care of kids and um and building a bright future and and really really respecting if opiates are given like candy of course there's going to be massive addiction and then what do we do about what we have now yeah. and it's a waste of, of of human intelligence you know there are a lot of smart people out here i'm i'm not the only smart guy you know there's artists out here you know there's there's people who can really contribute to society but they're unable to do so and it is a waste and i i actually is a terrible thing i actually do. wanted uh to tell you that um that we have talked to people out here and they've been philosophers or writers or artists musicians and it's just been so interesting talking to people out here, really taking time to talk to them because... Because we're regular people, you and, know. And in many ways, you're out of the matrix. And sometimes some of them are in the matrix, but some people in normal life are also in the matrix. A lot of them are. And if I, if I, I do have one thing to say. Um, you know, when you're walking down the street and you're a rich white person, right, and you see some homeless people... Um, the, the look of uh, pity, yeah. disgust, and fear, you know, like you're afraid of us, uh, really is just the most insulting thing in the world. You know, we, you know they look at us like animals. We're, we're not. We're, we're not going to hurt you. We're not going to rob you. You know, um, uh, you, know you, you know, you don't have to treat us like pariahs. You know, I hate it when I walk by and I say hi as I pass by someone and they just don't even say anything like I don't exist. Um, yeah, you know, be nice. It's, be it's, nice. It's, it's not polite and it's, it's, it's fucked up. You know, it only it only perpetuates the, the drug addiction because it makes you feel That's like right. you're garbage. You know, it yeah. sucks. It sucks the way we, we are treated by there. the general population, especially rich people, because there's that gap and they're so far yeah. above and they feel like they're they're different. You know. Yeah, yeah. It sucks. I don't know. And, and it's rich. just another human. It's just two humans. It's not. Yeah, it is. You know, but yeah, yeah I don't know. Is this is this is this right? What are you guys doing? What are you doing? We're we're doing TV. Like two or three nights ago, so my don't have my phone right now. Um, I'm sure I'll acquire one uh, again, but don't expect an email back within you know like right away. Yeah, that's pretty m crazy. That it got rubbed at gunpoint. These are fucking real things, dude. Yeah. This is real fucking shit. Well, and three Can't weeks before that, so I was stuck saying, in my stomach fuck and, all the and time. Took my stuff, you know, on Christmas Day, not last Christmas, but the Christmas before that, someone took a knife to my head. You see that scar that runs right there? Jeez. Uh, yeah, they, they, they had the robotics. We could zoom in on that. Yeah, I mean, wow. You know, it's it's part of life on the street. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's brutal sometimes. You sure you is. imagine if you lost every single possession you have every single month, like everything except for the clothes on your back. Like you lose everything once a month, and it's fucking frustrating as fuck. You know, you can't. I've I've been playing this fucking role playing game over and over on my fucking phone, and each time I lose my phone, I gotta start it over, and it's really frustrating me. That's the stuff that pisses me off. Like I like video games. You know, I want to finish that role playing game, but I can't because people keep on robbing me. It's fucked up. And you just, it's its a usually a violent act when someone's, like, you you have your backpack and they're just, like, have a weapon and they ask you for... Well, yeah, and the, either they steal it, you know, and you don't notice, or, or they or they rob you. And, you know, if you're on the street and you don't fight back, it doesn't matter if there's a whole army that you're going to fight against. You need to fight, because uh, if you don't, you're going to be labeled as a bitch. And, um, and they'll keep picking on you. Yeah, and they'll keep on robbing you, and, yeah, you you got to fight, you know. You've got to fight. You know, and I and I fucking hate fighting. I yeah. hate it so much. You know, I don't like hurting people. And I don't like being hurt. Yeah, it, that's that's but circles us all the way back again to yeah. what we were saying about and, war. And let's and not forget that uh, violence is the lowest form of human communication there is. The lowest form. You know, it's ridiculous. There's no other. There's no other lower form of a way to fucking get an idea across. Besides, I disagree with you, and and I'm just gonna punch you. So. 
that way you can't disagree with me any longer. You know, don't use your words <laughs> or anything like that. You know, let's just do violence. <laughs> uh, I deserved every beating. Wow, I Sean. Ever okay. Got. All right, brother. Yeah, it was good talking to you, man. That's fantastic. Ah, you, this was such a good show. Thank you for your show. time on the show. Yeah, this you, was man. so great. I really appreciate yeah. it. It's all good, you know. I, you know, I try to be upbeat and, and positive and, and, you know, joke around and stuff, um, you know, because, you know, uh, life still isn't that bad. You know, I have fun. Yeah. It's okay. You know, yeah. everything's okay. Yeah. Yeah. God bless Godspeed. Yeah, and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, and all that stuff. Alan's yeah, such a good kid. All right, see you soon. Well, that was... Absolutely crazy and very unexpected. And <laughs> welcome to the real Yeah, I wasn't world. expecting a very Punk. deep and long conversation like that. And initially, having it start out with war and land and water and violence and greed, and, and then to talk about perspective and augmenting perspective and seeing things from you know a hundred different ways instead of just one way and then his story about how he had what he wanted in life and then how so many veterans go through this I can't believe opiates are given like candy that seems like the craziest thing in the world and then we make our foreign policy advances on the backs of human mental health being sacrificed for it. And that doesn't seem right. Seems very wrong. Well, that was a very, very insightful and heart touching conversation. I'm very grateful to be doing this and have water and food. Let's see if other people will talk to us for a little bit longer and yeah. see what can happen. Maybe you want to just do that then. Hey, ladies, do you want to talk on our show for a little bit? We're just talking about, like, thoughts on humanity. Let me see if I can get this car. <laughs> the car. Hey, I'm, I'm currently do doing a show. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on humanity that you'd like to share with us. Oh, can you pull up into robot. my shot quick? <laughs> I'm pulling my shot. Hold yeah. on, let's see if I can get Keep coming. <laughs> keep coming. You keep coming. Uh, yeah. Keep coming. Stop, awesome. stop. Perfect, oh, perfect. Yes. Do, you have, wow. do you have any thoughts on humanity you would like to share with us? Like humanity in, humanity in what ways? Like In any way that comes to mind. Um, wow. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. He's, honestly. He's got no thoughts. Yeah, I really don't know. <laughs> like, what's like the first thought about humanity that comes to mind? Like, what what do you think about us? Like, how we doing? I mean, I say like we're pretty good, like in, in evolving. But you know how it is nowadays. You know, with the with the president, the government. You know, it's kind of BS. It could it could be better, but you know what? Well, what could we do? As much as we try to protest, whatever, nothing ever nothing ever works. Can I could I could I, I ask to steal you for five minutes for a quick conversation? Are you guys in a rush? Yeah, we're you're in a rush. Yeah, I appreciate the quick wisdom. Yeah. I appreciate it too. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Thank you for stopping. Wow, Alan. We so that was interesting. Thing. Let's see if I can stop another car. <laughs> you want to talk to us? No? Okay. <laughs> Let me yes. see if I can get this guy. Hold on. <laughs> oh my you want to stop by and chat for a bit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're having a, we're just talking to people about their thoughts on humanity, like what the hell's on their mind, like what's the status of the world. Here we go. You know? Here we go. Yeah, you wanna wanna chat for a bit as you spark up? What is that joint? Yeah. 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 Right. No. Yeah. With the cigarette. Yeah. Somewhere. somewhere up in the up in the cap. You got like what what are, what do you what are your thoughts on what's going on in the world today? We come into the know, shot a little. Got, I just got here. A couple like of days what? ago. To San Francisco? Yeah, from well, where? from Big Island, Hawaii. Yeah. You were from Big Island? I grew up there. You I grew, grew up, up here. Island? I grew up, yeah, I've been there since I was a little munchkin. But yeah, everything looks good. I like the architecture. People are cool. 
I think if people believe in themselves a little more, or a lot more, each of us, me too, you know, all yeah. of us, yeah. every day, then, you know, that'll spread to believing in each other. So, so whatever we make it, you know, it's good or... Yeah. <laughs> a little bit more belief in every single one of us. Yeah. Like, you got to look in the mirror and be like, I love myself. Like, yeah. I got to go and, and like. Even the right. yelling people, whatever. It's like, I'm only awesome. see the God in them and awesome. from there yeah. reach their individual yeah. person, you know? Yeah. We all got that spark called life or something. Now, why'd you move from Big Island to San Francisco? Because my mom, my vo the volcano hit my house. Well, actually, holy shit! Wow, no. And then my mom way. came out because everyone was like, "Oh, he's struggling," and so she pulled me out of the tent and FEMA camp, you know, after the kind. Oh, there, there we s the rescue, f rescue God, camps were set up. Yeah, cause for those that had lava literally destroy their houses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm just here, just like kicking with moms and. You know, it's cool. I, I, I like it. Damn, so you just came here. Yeah, like three weeks ago. Yeah. Three weeks ago. And yeah. now you're here until you're home until or... Until I go back or stay. I don't know. I, I like it. There's a lot more people. So it's fun. A lot more people. Yeah. yeah. But the vibe is not this Pacific Ocean, like, chill. Even though we're on the Pacific... I, I see it, like, I just see rainbows, you know? So I don't really... You see rainbows I where? Mean, Big Island? Everywhere, or like everywhere. Like I'm blind to the hate. Like whatever might be happening in someone's world, I pretty much don't see it. You know, unless I show up afterwards and then it's like, oh, that happened. Why did that happen? You know, but like whatever's happening in the world, meaning like everybody's life is vivid and complex and difficult to understand. Yeah, we're all emotional beings and spiritual beings and yeah. physical beings. So balancing all that and yet you know people out here feeling justified like i'd rather sit on the street and chill than support a government that's hurting others but at the same time there's weights where you could realize well those people are probably praying for a rescue you know yeah, well, yeah. you know it's balanced. damn um i'd rather uh just you know chill in the park or chill on the beach than support a government that's fighting a war killing people I mean, it is our government, essentially. Our parents paid into it with their, you know, time. So it's not the it's not people that are wrong. It's paperwork that's just got to be upgraded. You know what I mean? To fit with the times, because when those papers were written, people were a little, um, you know, focused on that time and age. So now we're in this time and age, so we just take, say, hey, that was good, you know. Get some updates to the software. Yeah, yeah that and updates to history, our story. Thanks you for know, watching, Ryan. Our story instead of history. Yeah, like all the, exactly, like, you know, tribal community, how it's all the truth of what it's been. A lot of writers, journalists were just indoor people. They never got out to really know. They just got the hearsay and wrote that. And I know from experience, because I've been written about in the papers, and <laughs> it's like, well, that didn't happen, but okay. You know. So if that can happen in two or three hours, imagine years, you know. So yeah, everyone, every, every, it's all good, like really just how you want to or how we individually would like to perceive it all right <laughs> it's a blessing to be born but it's also we really be born into some suffering as well and yeah, yeah. it can be said but i mean yeah. suffering is now it's more like mental suffering it's not yeah. so physical it's well know. in developed countries it can be uh, definitely be seen that way for sure it, yeah, it's 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 training. If you're trained to believe that you're from a lower society, then you're not going to really strive higher, right? If you're trained to believe we're all divine royalty, then you know that'll be. The, it's like, oh, I get high. Well, that's divine. Okay, cool. Then we can keep inventing and making music and. You know, I believe in music. <laughs> sure, everyone's aware of that. I Some believe of the best in artists music. In the world are high as a motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
and for the good of the people. It's just intention. Yeah. All right. What's your name? I'm Alan. What's your name? Alan Ahu. Ahu? Yeah. Ahu, good to meet you, man. Good to meet you. Nice. One love, one love, good love. Yeah. Fire is infinite glory. Fire it up. Fire it up. I'm not going to. I can't. Oh, no worries. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind. Cool. Oh, man. It's like a tea party. People used to sit and drink tea and then they smoke ganja. And sure, yeah, yeah. It's like, yo, I'm not going to leave my mom down because, or my cousin or my friend or even a stranger just because they're doing, you know, it's like, oh, that's not natural. Well, what about cars? You know, you know? so it's all good. Like, it just. Bless it up. <laughs> Whatever it is, you know. What do you, what do you um kind of like? What are your plans while you're here? Uh, shoot! I got a chance to just be next to my mom. Yeah. Just like support my mom. Like I'm 40 years old, and I was out there doing my thing, and Look, yeah. I got another house and everything. But I'm like, yo, I can get another house. You got one mom, can't get another mom, so <laughs> might as well invest, you know, that time and space because yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of youngsters ask it like, what would you do? If, I'm like, well, if I was younger, I'd go back and live with my mom and help fulfill some of her dreams. And she brought me into this world and take it as like a blessing and it like, oh, I get the chance to, you yeah. know. Wow. I don't know. It's just fun in the sun. Now you're here with mom and you get to kind of have that feeling that many people don't even get to tap into, which is my mom brought me in. I want to help my mom be happy. and It's yeah. hard, bro, because she's got her ideas and from like an ancient realm, like, which, I don't know, she was born, I'm like ancient. She was born like Dr. King was alive, so it's like ancient, you know, and, she, you know, and that, so it's this different. It's like, yo, it's all good, you know. She sees it how she sees it, and I just I respect that because, yeah, it's what it is. You have another maybe like piece of, like wisdom or thought on humanity that you think would be important to communicate. Yeah. Um, treat everyone like family. Care. You know I mean, why is someone screaming in the street? Why are they half naked? Care. I mean, that's all I could say. I could get deeper, but I don't want to. Yeah, good. Get a little deeper, like care. Like, okay, like, care. I would say like I met some kids who were in a um, what do you call that? Foster homes, right? They were taken from their parents. Like I grew up with my mom. We were cool. My mom, she, no one could ever take. She she'd have whipped that ass. Like my mom was this big, but. She doesn't, but she just slammed the door in the government's face. Like, no, this is our country, bang. You know, those are my kids, but, and my mom was, but for a lot of people, I, a lot of my good friends were, their lives were deeply, or still disrupted by their experience being adopted or, you know, having these government sanctions that take them away from their parents. And their parents were hardcore drug addicts, but at least they could go to the fridge and rip a bag of cereal open with their teeth or something. Whereas, you know, not everyone's intentions are right just because they can do the paperwork. You know. This idea of care, I think, is very both deep within us, but now has become disconnected from us in some ways. So, I want gardens. gardens. Yeah, seeds. Yeah, like planting like, seeds. If I don't know if this is PBS, but like if if I if someone tells me I'm a piece of shit because of the decisions I make, there's no way to get out of that. Man, I'm gonna continue to build diamonds and gold out of shit because I'm a piece of shit. So if we put each other up on a pedestal, you know what I mean? Like reverse crabs in a bucket, like, and then we, then it's like, oh, you're ascended being that's why you are doing these you know whatever it is that people don't agree with in the cities you know like people people complain oh, all the homeless people there's garbage everywhere they're pooping everywhere but i don't see any bathrooms anywhere 
So it's like, well, are you looking for a solution or are you looking for this negative energy to, you know? So that's the caring again. It's like, yeah. you know, sun shines on everyone, so we might as well. Sun shines on everyone, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we might as, might as well, well care. Right? Might as well, yeah, shine. Might as well shine on yeah, each other. Each other like brothers and sisters. And if my mom took nine grand from me, I'm not going to be like, act like I don't know her, you know? So why would I treat a stranger the same? That's someone's family also. Yeah. Um, this, has been, this has been good. Thanks, man. Thanks, yeah, for right, Thanks for chatting with us. Thanks for chatting. Thanks for chatting with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the oh yeah. Down. May we get all our good books back. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Damn, I can't believe that guy's vol the volcano swallowed up his house. And he's here telling us to care about each other. He's like looking around like, damn, SF is hella people. Look at this architecture. It's kind of funny. Yeah, he's right. He's right about care. Well, I'm cold, and I want to head in, and I want to tell you guys that this has been very insightful. Thanks for tuning in to this episode on Thoughts of Humanity, Thoughts on Humanity, Thoughts on Humanity, Thoughts on Humanity. And it's good because we get a little bit of diverse perspectives, you know, a little bit of here, a little bit of there, you know. Like the quick car stop, the car came by, we talked a little bit, and then they had to go, you know, so that was nice as well. And, you know, join us, join us. Like, you know, it's crazy. We talk to scientists, we talk to entrepreneurs, technologists, educators, different world leaders. And then we come out here on the street and we talk to people on the street, random people. That's right. Some of them are, some of them had crazy life-changing experiences that have caused them to live in different ways and see the world in different ways that it's much more unique in some ways than how we see the world and that's also a valid perspective that we think is very important to show on the show and it's very insightful so thanks for tuning in everyone if you guys had a good time go and share this with two people how often do you see content like this you don't see it very often ladies do you guys want to come on the show for a moment <laughs> we're closing the right. show had to ask you know had you needed to get a little bit of feminine energy on the show. So, share with two people. How often do you see stuff like this? Go share with two people. Have them share with two people. Let's go start a little community movement. Subscribe. Comment below with your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. What do you think about all of this? And join us on Patreon. Help us support this. Help us get out to more places and do more videos like this around the place. Much love. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you guys on another Thoughts on Humanity soon. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> Good job, Alan. Good job.